Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's uh, Big Porky here. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. Today, I'm joined by Terry from London, and we're going to have a few surprises for you today. And uh, I suggest you keep tuning in because this is a corker today. How are you doing, young man? Mate, I'm good, mate. Also, for you, congratulations on yeah. another extra million views, man. Like, you're going from strength to strength. So... I mean, numbers are looking good. Yeah, with uh, with it two million, it, it, uh, which I'm I'm proud about. Now it might say one point nine eighty or something on on the thing that uh, people look at, but on me analytics, we just hit two million today. So I'm really pleased about that. Uh, it's only we're only a small channel, aren't we? But I'd like to think that the effort's been put in it last twelve months. So how, really... how long did it take to get to your first million? Oh, first million probably took me. Uh, Two, just over two year, I think. So it's and then your second, second about eleven months, I think, something like that. So I've progress. That that's insane progress. So now imagine this time next year, you might be on four. Yeah, well, hopefully. I mean, I've hit all the targets that uh, Kevin has set me. He said, well, we need to be here, Russ, in, in a month. We need to be here in six months. And so I've hit, we've hit them all. And I'm pleased. It's only about five thousand subscribers as well, because we're only small, aren't we? But they're all genuine, aren't they? There's no we haven't bought any, so <laughs> with that. But uh how's weather down your way, Terry? Is it a bit better than up here? It it's clear, but it's freezing, mate. It's just not it's that soul destroying weather, isn't it? You know when you kind of know you're right at the beginning of January, so you still got February to come and you're like, ah oh, Jesus. Man. Yeah, it's uh it's not good, is it, mate? It's not good. I've got some uh, good topics for us today, uh, so I'm gonna jot, I'm gonna put put you on the spot a few times. Right, Fury against Joshua. Eddie Hearn says that it's on, it's on in Saudi, uh, but nobody else is saying a word. What what do you think about this? Is it getting a bit tired now? Or do do we know who, who do we believe now, or they're just putting the narrative out to stay in the news, like they did for Mayweather Pacquiao? What do you think, Terry? It's so it's, it's it's a mess at the moment, isn't it? Because now everyone knows what the hustle is. So yeah. all the people who can block it are like, pay me to go away. So Usyk's quite rightly saying, I want my mandatory shot. Wilder's saying, I want my third fight with Fury. Now they can both go to court, and if they both go to court, then Fury Joshua doesn't happen. So. It's, Where's the money going to come to pay Wilder his five million and Usyk his five million? Now, I mean, you, you're draining the pot, and from what I understand, Josh is not a guy that wants to give away money for nothing. No. So, so if you hear what they're saying now, now the proposal is, we'll do Wilder versus Charles Martin and Usyk versus Joyce, and then you know, then they'll be the next opponents for whoever wins the two fights between Fury and Joshua. But like, we don't care about that. If we're being honest, Russ, we what we care about is these guys saying they've signed for the fight, right? When that press conference happens, then I'll take it seriously. Right now, you know, this thing was meant to have been agreed a year ago. Uh, I don't imagine they've done anything over and above that. It was meant to have been agreed a year ago. Now we're hearing, oh, it's close to being agreed. Now we're hearing that everyone's happy with, with the deal. But no one said anything about money. No one's really said anything about venue because remember the venue in Saudi they had to pull back down. It's it doesn't exist. They have to rebuild another venue in Saudi. That doesn't make any sense to me. Do you feel do you feel Terry that uh, Eddie Earn and Joshua are going to hide behind the fact that they want to be undisputed and the mandatories and what can we do? It's all about undisputed. Do you think they might go back to that narrative now because they've they've gone the full circle now and. There isn't really anything else that they can put out now. I don't think anybody's even bothered about the belts now, are they, for these two? Are they really? We just want to know the best of the year is, don't we? Remember what we said, Russ. They've already agreed when this fight will happen. Yeah. And all they're doing for boxing fans is just yanking the chain. Yeah. Whenever yeah. they need you to get excited, they just yank the chain. And then everyone yeah. starts doing episodes about it. You start seeing articles on Boxing Scene about it. Coogan talks yeah. about it. The guys on Twitter all talk about it. But it hasn't moved forward. It doesn't. How long did it take for Fury and Joshua, not Fury and Wilder, to agree a fight? That took like two weeks. It doesn't take long to agree a fight if you both want it. Mm. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you, mate. What do you think? Coming, coming, just coming off topic a little bit, but we'll go back to that. What do you think about the uh, the Sky Sports uh, putting the IFL logos and the 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 other seconds out fighter and what fighter? What do you think about them putting their logos on that? Does that make them in-house media guys now? I mean, we've, I've got a screen. Well, no, so, so I think it's interesting, Russ, because. It shows that Sky are looking beyond Eddie Hearn. And I think that's a good thing because that's what you've been asking for, right? Yeah. So it shows that Sky are looking beyond Eddie and they're saying, okay, for us to be at the forefront of this thing called boxing, we need to lock down our supply chain. So I'd want to have a stronger relationship with all these outlets because otherwise DAZN will do it. So Sky are like, let's do it before DAZN do it. So don't be surprised if you see the zone partner up with its own outlets like behind the gloves and so forth. So I can see people now starting to to pick camps and then behaving accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. But getting back to uh, Fury Joshua, do you think that it's a bit cheeky of them to put two fights, to, to, it, to, be, to, them to be locked down for two fights? Because these governing bodies, they're not going to put up with that. We're a year, we we all these other guys screaming for managers that they're going to be locked down a year. I mean, are, are they more or less saying we want two bites at the cherry at this because it's a cash out and it's the biggest ever? I mean, I mean why yeah. does it have to be two fights? Doesn't, it, doesn't, doesn't one fight have to warrant a rematch? Don't we have to scream for the rematch? What if it's a stinker? Do we have to sit through another stinker? Because Fury can quite easily turn it into a stinker if he wants, can't he? So I think the second fight will be determined by the first. So let's say, for example, Fury just treats Joshua like he treated Wilder. Not impossible, but it may. You know, let's say that happens. Yeah. I don't even think Joshua would want the second fight. I, I think the second fight talk would go away because you couldn't spin that. Uh, they might try some injury angle and say, well, you know, Joshua hurt his shoulder in camp and so he couldn't fight. And that's how you might try and keep money in it, yeah. which which Eddie does do. But if yeah, if, if Joshua gets beat badly, then uh, who really cares? And I also think if Fury gets beat badly, I don't think the fans will want to see the rematch. No, because they'll no. just be happy to they'll be happy to just run over Fury, won't they? Go, oh, yeah. told you he was no good. Yeah, you see. And then people start talking about, well, Joshua's just beating Fury. I'd rather see him fight Wilder, let him just complete the set and retire. Mm. Those guys, Joshua, has to fight Fury and Wilder, because if not, he's going to go down as a coward, isn't he, Joshua? Uh, no, not a coward. He's going to be a guy who chased the money. That's yeah. what he'll be. He'll be a guy who chased the money. While telling and... us a different story. Well, well, if you chose to believe it. But remember, you and I have talked about this for years, Russ. Yeah. There's a project, Joshua, and it is... How much money can we get out of a six foot six, 17 and a half stone man in what, 10 years? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what, that's what, it, that's what this is all about. Mm, just like they did with Eubank in the 90s and it over that five year period. Yeah, they flogged him. And, and people need to be honest, Eubank hasn't got an amazing CV. No, he's only got four wins over world champions. And he was the sort of man who, I think would have beaten Gerald McClellan. I think he would have beaten all those guys. Like McClellan, I think he'd have given none trouble because he's so powerful. Um, we'd have liked to have seen him in with guys like Julian Jackson. He could have had a really good CV. Even um, what's the guy that James Tony battered? Uh, Iran Barkley. It would have been Barkley. good to see him in with all of those guys. Nigel Ben had a tear up with him, didn't he? Yeah. But the, pro uh, the but the issue is, Russ, as we know, the Hearns do not like spending money on opponents. They just don't. That's why everything's pay per view. They don't want to pay, yeah. All right then, uh, Dillian White, Povetkin, Monaco. What do you think? Oh, is this the one that you went crazy about uh, on your last video? Yeah. <laughs> Porky's Grill. <laughs> Porky's Grill, yeah. Mate, I thought you were going to have a heart attack. <laughs> um, so let's be honest, the Dillian White business model is literally everything's pay-per-view. Right? That's it his business model. It matters, though, isn't it, Terry? I mean, when you poke the holes at it, 
He's, he's, he's heading into his sixth pay-per-view, five of them he's headlined, and he's not been in a European title fight. I mean, how many more pay-per-views can they dish up for Dylan White that's not above British level? But he makes good money. That's the thing. Dylan White makes good money. Do you know why he makes good money, Russ? So he gets he gives smart. fans fights they want to see. That's it. But you tell me the last Dylan White fight you didn't enjoy. Maybe Mary is back and a push. But Malcolm Parker was a hell of a Malcolm fight. Tan. Okay. But let's see. Look, look at what he's given you. He gave you two Chisora fights. Yeah. yeah. You enjoyed those. The Parker fight was enjoyable. Yeah. The Rivas fight was enjoyable. Yeah. So how many have we got there? Four or five? The Povetkin fight was enjoyable. There. Let's say. Okay. I so his pay per views. No, no. But Dillian's pay per views, right? have been really good events. They've been entertaining fights. And that's partly because he's vulnerable. We now know that he's vulnerable to a, to a shot on the chin. So we enjoy that. Now, how many fights of Josh's on pay-per-view have you enjoyed? Vladimir won. Ruiz okay. won. So that's who's offering better value for money, Russ? Dylan White. But Dylan White calls all these people out and then doesn't take the fight. He calls Joshua out. He mm. gets oh, wait, 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 wait. No. But if we focus on, on what you said, why has he got pay-per-views? He delivers better value on pay-per-view than anyone else does. I, if you told me I've got to pay 20 quid to watch a Joshua fight or a Dillian fight, I'm paying 20 quid for the Dillian fight. <clears throat> oh. And I think, I think that's where boxing's going, Russ. The guys who are going to make money are going to be, the, just like it was in the 90s, the guys that give you the tear-ups, the guys that give you the, the nip and tuck fights. That's what you're paying for. All right, then. Uh, moving on from uh, Dillian White, the can't man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. <laughs> Savaland, is that just an extension of Matchroom, basically, at the moment? What, what, what do you think? Nah, nah, nah. I'd say, and I might be wrong on this, Germany as a boxing market isn't that far behind the UK. You can make good money in Germany. The Sowlands make good money in Germany. I think we all understand that they got burned on the World Boxing Super Series. Now, God, I don't even know if I want to say this publicly. There were rumors and allegations that there was a lot of dirty money financing the World Boxing Super Series. And the reason guys weren't getting paid towards the end was because guys couldn't get their money out of the country because of sanctions. And that's why the World Boxing Super Series struggled. So I don't know if it's that the Southerners now need to go back to bread and butter boxing and building up another stable. And, you know, it's a good start with Eubank. But I think they've always been friendly with Eddie because remember, the Southerners had George when George was fighting on matchroom shows. And then it was Matchroom who signed off on Sky, getting the World Boxing Super Series when it didn't have a broadcast partner. So I think, being honest with you, mate, I think the Sowlers just want to rebuild for their own good, but it makes sense to work with Eddie. And it gives Eddie a kind of a diplomatic way to work with Eubank without admitting that he was wrong about Eubank, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that Eubank fights Liam Williams or Kel Brook? Well, why should he? Uh, well, well, what do they do for his career? They do nothing for his career. I think if I'm Eubank Jr., nah, they're, they're irrelevant to where Eubank is. If I'm Eubank Jr., I'm basically saying, give me a couple of soft UK fights and then just put me in with Golovkin. Put me in with Golovkin. If I do all right in that, put me in with Canelo. If I do all right in that, put me in with Billy Joe. Let me get out the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brooke Khan, do you see it happening? No, I just... Unless Kel, unless Kel fights for free, I don't see Khan doing it. Khan will not want to help Kel make any kind of money. He won't. It's personal between those two. It's really personal. I don't see it... I don't see it happening unless Kel takes it like an embarrassing amount of money. But like, I think you pointed this out. It's interesting to see good old Edward sniffing around again. You know, just after he said he wouldn't work with Kel again, he's sniffing around. Yeah, texting him and all that. He's got no scruples, has he, Eddie? And has he? 
He's the type of well, guy that turned Queen's evidence on you if you went to court, wasn't he? But who wouldn't though? I, like, who, you know, we we forget a lot of people sat in prisons now are, are grasses, and that's why they got their soft sentences. There are a lot of grasses in the game. Grassing is, you know, I think the the idea of honor is something that maybe one percent of people believe in, and everyone else is just like, I'll do what's best for me. So you don't see uh, Brooke against Eubank then at one sixty. Ah, uh, for what? And like, if Crawford can run over Kel Brook, I think Eubank Jr. will. Like, like Kel's health is in real risk in that fight. Like, it'll be another situation like he had with uh, what was the kid's name? Blackwell, Nick Blackwell, where his dad will have to tell him to hit Kel to the body again. Yeah, but Carlos uh, Howland's uh, dropped Kel Brook's name into the mix. Well you, well, you have to get British fans excited about something, right? And Liam Smiths. Liam Williams have been talking about them all at 160. Yeah, that, that's how you generate the buzz. You go, oh, well, we'll put him in with this guy. I'd like to see him fight Liam Smith, actually. Liam deserves a payday. Uh, that guy's been on the shelf for maybe, what, a year and a half now, maybe more? And he's not, to be fair to Liam Smith, he's not one of them kids that comes out and just makes a meal out of everything, his circumstances and plates victim like a lot of people on IFL, is he? Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. He, he, he knows, man. But I think he made he made a reasonable living off Frank. How many fights has he had with Eddie? One tops. I think he's had Eggington. He might have had one or two. I don't think he's had that many, has he? Yeah, yeah. Hearn's got problems. We we talked about it on the last episode, Russ. This middle management thing is a problem for Eddie because he doesn't know what to do with those guys who who sell out arenas without being pay per view stars. He doesn't know what to do with them. All right, then. Uh, Josh Warrington is fighting that Lara. He were ranked uh, not in the top 15 in November. Then he fought a guy with 10 losses uh, in December, and now he's he's ranked number 10, actually, by IBF. He's been slipped in there. Do you think Eddie got caught out by that one? <laughs> or maybe he, maybe he helped it happen. Well... Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what would make doing. would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, because we know what's going on, don't we? Eddie's lobbied Annie to get a guy in top fifteen to get it down as a voluntary. Any for Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington runs over that kid, though, doesn't he? Uh, do you think Josh? I hope so. Sorry, go on. I was going to say. So it looks like he'll fight this kid, but he's going to fight that that Kang Zhu kid, right? Yeah. At some point, he's got to fight that guy. So. I don't think there's any escaping that fight, but Warrington isn't a pay-per-view guy. This is the thing with Josh Warrington. He's not... Why not? He sells, sells out Leeds Arena. I'm sure they could make it... He does more tickets in his area than Dylan White does in London, so they can make Dylan White pay-per-view, but not Josh Warrington, a world champion who's won everything. Yeah, but Josh... No, You know what I always say about these things, Russ. Josh is a little guy in a sport that rewards big men. That's his problem. I, I, I'm a, I'm a convert to Josh Warrington. I didn't really believe it before. I just thought he was one of those standard northern boxers, hands up, loads of work rate, no real skill. But he's run over everyone. They've Everybody. Put he's done everything asked of him. He's undefeated, man. You got and, and, and I love how he presents himself. He's funny. He's good in interviews. He's all the things you want. Yeah. But I don't think he, he's not a guy that wants the limelight. And I think that's why he's not a pay per view star. Yeah. Do you know, in years to come, we're going to have Dave Allen as a Sky pundit and Josh Wannett and just sat at home watching the world champion. It's all messed up, isn't it? <laughs> well, who's going to have the money, though? Josh will probably have money, won't he? There you go. That's what matters in this game. Uh, all right, then. So I'm not happy about Josh Warrington's opponent. I would have liked to have seen Eddie build up, up Campbell Hatton on Josh Warrington's show and but build Warrington up into a pay-per-view star as well as Campbell off back of it. But they're putting Campbell on Dillian's show, aren't they, to try and get more pay-per-view buys off Hatton fans? So so let's let, let's take a step back on that one of us. What's Campbell Hatton actually done? Like, like you, you're a guy, you're a guy. You're, you're a guy that likes to go, what's someone actually done, right? Exactly, yeah. But you'd have thought that 
Costa from North, you'd have put it, they'd have put him on with on Josh Warrington's undercard, wouldn't you, to give him some experience and help build views upon Sky non pay per view for Josh Warrington so they can say, well, this is going to work if we have Campbell on Warrington's undercards. But yeah, except they've put him on Dillian's pay per view straight away, haven't they? Well, but wait, 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 wait. Oh, they did Connor Ben on Joshua's. This is this is porky hour right now, Lane. So so normally, Russ, if that wasn't Ricky Hatton's kid, you'd be like, why is this kid getting a profile? Like, yeah. no real anything. He's just famous for being on a few Instagram. Oh, I'm saying he should be on a Sky Sports show, but they could put him on a non-pay-per-view to start him out. He shouldn't be getting a pay-per-view slot for his debut. He's only getting that because he's Hatton's kid, isn't he? It's unfair to other kids that are, you know, are turning over who have to go through the Sky Sports non pay per view route and go on early. Oh, do you think they're going to so, put? So Cam- Hang on a minute. Do you think they're going to put Campbell Atten on at six o'clock? He's going to be on at nine o'clock. Him. Okay, so if look, if you're a young prospect, I, I look at it from this perspective. I'd rather because you're going to get paid the same. I'd rather be on the show that gets the most views and free to air. The Warrington show will get more views than the Dillian show. Good. That's just my 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 take on it. I think Warrington will get more views. I think people legitimately want to see Warrington do his thing because I know I do. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah. So that having ha- having him on there would have made sense. I don't think Campbell Hatton is going to move a lot in terms of pay per view buys. I think people realize that that this Hatton thing is a bit of a myth, really. That these guys are amazing. It's just that he looks a bit like Ricky. And you'll see it in the build-up. They'll talk about how much he looks like Ricky, how much he fights like Ricky. They basically, they want to tap into that Ricky Hatton energy with a kid who I don't think has that, he hasn't got that Ricky Hatton hunger. But like like you once said, Russ, this is where Hearn's taking it. It's all about the gimmick. Yeah. So you take Nigel Benson out of Australia, make him a world champion at some point. You now take Ricky Hatton's kid, try and make him a champion. Yeah. You work with Sauron to take Eubank's kid and make him a world champion. I mean, like, how long till one of Caldwell's kids on a, is on a match room show? How long till, like, I don't even know. Like, he'll just dig these names up, won't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the narrative. It's about the narrative, isn't it? And this is where boxing's going into a dark place, in my opinion, because these kids are just barging in, getting good money. Because uh, the other all the dads are, I don't agree with it. I think it should all but be. They, but they earn it. Though. Are they amateur stars? Is Conor Ben an amateur star? Campbell Atten, are they? Did they win ABAs? Well, Conor Ben won ABAs. Uh, Eubank won the Herringay. He's won a tournament at least. So I'm going to give Eubank his due. He, he's he's won a tournament, and then he kind of turned pro after. He didn't bother with the ABAs. He just went right. Let's get stuck in. All right, then. Moving on. Uh, Jamie McDonald's situation with the... that's come to light. Is it Danny Wilson who does the nutrition guy or whatever? They went out to uh, Japan and they, they, they had him in hot baths and starved him to death. He looked very gaunt, didn't he? They carried him to scales. Uh, do you feel that People now are managing to blag a position into boxing as nutrition men. And before you know where you are, they're all doing pads and wrapping hands. But do you feel that these nutrition men are needed in boxing? Because Jamie McDonald, after after it's weighing, they give him a shake, a Yazoo strawberry shake, and a snick about to, uh, to, to, to get something in him, rehydrate, whatever they call it. But do you feel that these positions that these people are getting in boxing are unwarranted and that the trainer should do everything from the strength and conditioning to the pad work to the sparring to arranging the, the daily schedule for their fighters. What, what do you think? What's your take, Terry, on the situation? Well, Jamie okay, so, out, didn't he? So, so, so we don't necessarily know the full story because I think there's a lot of things that were wrong. This is the Inoue fight, right? Inoue, Inoue fight, fight, yeah. So if you remember, they stopped off in Dubai. They didn't go straight to Japan. They stopped off in Dubai. Mm. And you remember it was Caldwell, McDonald was there, uh, Anthony Fowler was out there, if you remember. Mm. Uh, uh, there, were, there were a few of them, because, and I found it really strange that they stopped off in Dubai. So they stop off in Dubai, which is going to stress the body out, because you've gone from 
the UK, which was probably about 20 degrees colder than Dubai. Then you go to Dubai, then you go to Japan, which is probably close to the UK climate at the time, right? So you do all of these things and you mess the body up. Like British fighters are notorious for getting this wrong. So they get to a point and they realize they can't, they can't strip the weight off and they get Jamie in the hot baths, they put him in the saunas, he's got the sweat suit, they're doing all of this stuff to basically run him into the ground. And so he gets knocked out because essentially he's he's depleted himself so much that all he can do is show up to fight. Look like a skeleton, actually... didn't he? Yeah. And, and they did the weight wrong. They made a mistake by going to Dubai, but no one ever holds their hands up. Now, the thing with this Danny Wilson guy, like I've kept an eye on him for a while. And he's one of these guys, I think he works at Sheffield Hallam, and they've got a sports performance facility there. And so his idea is you can apply science to boxing and, you know, the more science you have in boxing, the better your performers are. It's all rubbish, really, Russ. And the reason it's rubbish is this. Boxing's a game of skill. Above all else, it's a game of skill, like, like rock, paper, scissors. You know, it's, it's a game of skill, but there's also a bit of chance involved in there as well. Because I don't know what punch you're going to throw next, necessarily. I don't. So... There's only so much you can prepare with using science before it's actually like, can you actually fight or not? And so when you have these guys coming in pretending to be gurus, ah, oh, I can help you make weight in this. All they do is they take these UFC weight cuts, right? Deplete your sodium, deplete your potassium, do this, do that. And you can do that in the UFC because in the UFC, you're not fighting for 36 minutes. You're not. You know, number two, in the UFC, Russ, you have rest holds. I know, I know the MMA guys will tell me I'm wrong on this, but you have holds where if I've got someone in a choke, I'm not using that much energy. I'm pretty relaxed. The other guy's using his energy, but I can rest. In boxing, you don't have that. So yeah. when, you, when, you, when you mess with that weight cut, you really affect performance. Now, are you, I know you're annoyed at people showing up out of nowhere and being able to to get a spot in boxing. But yeah, and where were these people at the beginning? Where were they when Jamie McDonald were, uh, had had a couple of losses in a draw and, 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 and you know, he, he were on skid row? Where were these people well, then? Well, it's all right, okay, jumping right. in, though. We're world champion boxers when they're getting a big career, highest payday in another country. Everybody wants to be, everybody's an expert, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? That's how the game works. But, but remember, you, you know, you, you've been through the process of trying to get a license, right? Oh, God. Yeah, but you were like, if, what was it? If Chris Medley can do it, anyone can do it. Well, you can't. And, if, oh, no, if you've got a criminal record, if, if they don't take a, if they take a dislike into it, they just say no anyway, don't they? Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is, like you said, if Chris Medley can do it, anyone can do it. And a, a lot of people outside of boxing look at what happens in boxing and go, I yeah, can do I that. that as a throwaway don't. comment. I didn't mean I could do it. I just wanted to be a second. I didn't want to be a trainer. But, uh, but the, no, everybody but, can but, do it though, can they? No, no, but for us, the same thing. If someone had seen you in a corner, they'd have been like, what's this Russell Hartley ever done in boxing? That's yeah. what they do. Well, you're there to learn, yeah. aren't you? I, I, I would have been there to learn, but I'm over it now. Yeah, so, so I guess my point is, people all think they can do it. So the thing with boxing is there are no barriers to entry. So you yeah. can go and do it. My worry is, there are too many strength and conditioning guys. There are too many nutritionists. And for me, all of that added together is about 5% of what you do in the ring. Do you feel that what people are saying at the moment, these nutrition guys and being called mercenaries by people in industry, and do you feel that, that, that that's uh, warranted? You know, that um, is? No. So the, so the stuff that they're saying is probably backed by science for us. In terms of yeah. if you eat this at this time, this will happen. Okay, yeah. cool. But guys like Sugar Ray Robinson, guys like Jake Lamotta, they're doing 15 rounds eating steak and potatoes. So yeah. how important is nutrition really? What are these guys really adding? The is real it worth that actually, expense that the Tekken are to pay fighters purses? Yeah. Are they adding anything? Is the question. Is, is the I don't think is no, they are. I think it's all in people's heads, me. I think they ought to outlaw them. Yes. Yeah, well, I want to... No, no, no. Because I think you, as a boxer, you do need to learn how to be professional. So you've got to know 
that you can't eat McDonald's every day and stuff like that. You've got to know how to do that. But you should be learning that in the amateurs because you're making weight regularly in the amateurs. So you've got to learn that discipline in the amateurs. Yeah. So when you do turn pro, you have an understanding of these sorts of things. Because I'm seeing, like, you know, you see massage therapist, nutritionist, guy that works on your left leg, guy that works on your right leg, guy to massage your knuckles, guy to massage your fingers, one guy to do your nails so when your hands are wrapped, they look good. And you're seeing these massive entourages building around the pay-per-view guys because everyone's trying to get their little 3%, 5% or whatever. That stuff doesn't really help. Look at Fury. Fury doesn't have, well, he has a bit of it now because I think <laughs> MTK put too much money into him for there to be any risks. But Tyson Fury fought Vladimir. He didn't have all of that stuff around him. So you can go a long way by being a skillful boxer. You can go a long way by being fit. You can go a long way by being strong. You remember what Carl Froch said, don't you? The, the, the training will take the average, average man so far, but you've just got to have a little bit of talent. But if you're fit and you're a bit like athletic, you can do something in boxing. He, he, he said, but he believes that you just got to have a bit of talent as well. Yeah. You know I mean? It's the skills, Russ. Russ, yeah. I say this. The reason you see all these guys looking for strength and conditioning guys, nutritionists, massage therapists, the reason they talk about they need a 12-week camp, the reason they talk about needing 15 hours sleep, the reason they talk about needing compression socks and those, those leg warmer things, the reason they talk about cryotherapy, the reason they talk about soreness, all of this stuff is because they're not skillful enough to win with their skills. Yeah, it's like... So they try uh, to steal every advantage. Trying to think of that fight, and I don't rock to put Dennis Williams on there. David Howe, you know him, old Dave Allen for. I think he fought him a couple yeah. of times, didn't he? He yeah. had a uh, strength and conditioner, chiropractic, manager, advisor, consultant, solicitor, nutritionist, and they all had matching tracksuits on. And he only had a couple of fights, and obviously it didn't work out for him, did it? But I remember me, me and Michelle were like, God, he's on to a hodge. <laughs> and then I told you about the time that I used to go see Frotch up at LB Hall and he'd carry his big, massive bag out of his Range Rover into hotel. And he, he, could, he wouldn't even fit through swivel doors at LB Hall. And I'm like, you need to get an entourage car. And he's like, why do I need to pay people to cook? I said, well, don't pay me. He said, yeah, but they're still going to want feeding, aren't they? And watering and driving about. And then I've got to, what, what are they going to be doing at night while I'm asleep in hotel? So he, he didn't bother with all that. So that's two different types of people, in it? Some people think they need it, the big entourage and all the advisors. Some people just, where's my gloves? Let me just get on with it kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Does that sound a bit bizarre? Or did Carl do it out of financial reasons because he just didn't feel that he needed to pay anybody because he got done it the hard mm. way? I don't know. Well, but Carl was pretty disciplined anyway. So if you think about, Think about Carl Froch, right? He's always been able to hold that weight. So he's yes. never been worried about the weight. And he was with McCracken, who was always... McCracken was kind of ahead of his time in terms of nutrition and stuff like that. So he had that advice. And then by the time McCracken takes over at GB, what, 2009? Yeah. He's got access to all of that anyway. And don't forget, so, Carl's got a sports degree, hasn't he, as well? From Loughborough. Yeah. So he, he would already he already probably didn't need any of that, did he? So maybe that's well, what well he, he he got it from GB. So people forget what Froch got the performance analysis, he got the use of GB, he got the No, he got all that before style. he turned pro. He, he did he did all that when he was a teenager, didn't he? The Loughborough thing. No, no, I mean but if you look at his Oh, career, you mean he picked like, and he, yeah. he educated himself more while he were at Sheffield, you mean, yeah. Well, well, because you, look, you're surrounded by all those guys at GB who are all yeah. like top nutritionists. Jessica Ennis and all that. Well, there's that, but it's the nutritionists. It's the guys who talk about hormones. It's the guys that talk about your strength and conditioning, your vision, like how to how to perceive things, how to see things. They got that vision coaches there. They had everything at the EIS that Carl had access to. Yeah. So he didn't need an entourage because he just plugged into the GB machine. Yeah, and we don't agree. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with all that EIS up there. I think it should be for amateurs. But, you know, the Cobra had a leg up with that, didn't he? All right, then. Uh, let's have a look. 
Frank's wife's died, aren't she? Frank Smith, you know, who, who worked with Peter for years. Obviously, they got a 10 year apiece, didn't they, in jail? But he's obviously he's helped Peter for years with Jim and doing a bit of picking people up from airports and helping out behind the scenes. His wife, Betty, died on a Sunday, 10 to 1. She had COVID, went to hospital, and they says, yeah, you've got cancer as well, but we can't give you chemo till your COVID's gone. So you got to wait a couple of weeks till your COVID's gone, and she dies Sunday, so it's pretty sad news, that, isn't it? That's tragic, man. Been here over that. 50 years, been with her over 50 years. I'm gutted for Frank. Yeah. I hope he's all well, right. So uh, our thoughts are with Frank. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a staunch old man, Frank, you know, we've got locked up. Went no comment all the way through and took a 10 for his first defence. That's not bad, that, is it? That's that's hardcore, that, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, not many people do that, man. Not many people can do that, do they? So, Frank, I thought so were you, mate, and I will speak to you soon. Uh, Nigel Ben's son fights Vargas. Is it just gives a good answer to these, a quick answer to these questions. Is it a good fight, Ben Vargas? Uh, we saw Vargas fight Amir Khan in Birmingham. I think that was the last fight on the matchroom yeah. contract. He he didn't look that impressive then. I imagine he's a lot worse now. Yeah, that'd be a good name for Connor to have, but it's not a step up on the other guy. I don't think. So yeah. we've got to be honest and say, Connor Ben fight Josh Kelly. Connor Ben fight Chris Congo. Stop going all around the world trying to find these people. Fight these. Fight the people. Who are about your level of experience? Fight these well, guys. Chris Congo, I'd like to see him fight uh, Nigel Ben. Uh, sorry, Connor Ben. Yeah. Would you like to see uh, Connor Ben against Anthony Tomlinson? Nah. No. No. Nah. No interest in that. What about? Now, that's no disrespect to Anthony Tomlinson, but yeah. I think Connor Ben's just on a different level. Yeah, but Anthony's twelve and zero, isn't he? We ate knockout. But different, different level. Different level. All right. Josh Kelly against David Evanesian. Does it happen? This is fourth time that it's gonna it's gonna happen. Is it, is it does it get cancelled the fourth time, is it? Three or four times. Yeah, we talked about this before, didn't we, Russ? When we were having dinner with Richard. Yeah. And he was telling he was telling us that Josh was gonna put in a performance. It's like, okay, cool. Well, cool. We're looking forward to him because he works with Adam Move, doesn't he, Richard Tower? Yeah. Yeah, so Richard was like, Josh is looking good. Like, okay, cool. And then I just remember, because they, they all they all did a training session that called us during the day after. And that actually happened. So you, you assume that Josh is all right if they've got time to go there. I'm like, okay, cool. And then the fight gets pulled. And you're like, oh, why did that happen? But I just think deep down, Avanessian, they're waiting for him to get old, if anything. But Avanessian... It's a hard fight for Kelly because Avanessi is a hard man. Like all that flashy slipping and stuff isn't going to work when Avanessi is just digging to the body. Yeah. So I, I just, you got to put Josh in in a fight at some point. And then from from what I've heard from people, I don't think Josh Kelly really lives the life. No. So, no, no, no. no. I, you know, yeah, he he's got that kind of Ricky Hatton thing to him where he feels he needs to be with his mates, with his boys and all that sort of stuff. So sometimes, you know, that's not necessarily good for your career. So let's see what happens with this Avanesian fight. I'd like to see it happen because, like I said, if nothing else, it would be a good loss to take. That's the, that's the sort of loss you want. Adam Smith were waxing lyrical about Josh Kelly's uh, six jabs on the chart where he's left hand or something, or hooks or something. He says that's Roy Jones-esque. Do you remember? Yeah, but Roy Jones did it against the best in the world. Like you, Josh Kelly doing it against Journeyman, like that doesn't impress me. Yeah, he impressed Adam Smith, though, didn't he? He went into full on, full on bean mode. Yeah, but you love bean mode, man. That's what gives you your content. Sizzling, added spice. Right, uh, all right then. Uh, moving on, uh, Lawrence Coley. Oh, I know you're a big fan of, him, and I know you get on with him. Glownaki. Yeah. World title, uh, at hell, hell of a card. Like, like, I know I give her a hard time, but when I saw that card, I just said, This is what free to air TV should feel like. Yeah, and do you feel that Lawrence Acoli doesn't get the PR that he should? He probably gets the PR that he should, 
I think once he wins this title, it takes him to another level. You think he moves I, up I, heavyweight, Terry, eventually? I think let, he'll either unify or go for undisputed, and then he'll he'll move up. It'll be interesting because he, he's got a big frame, but I don't think Okoli's a guy that will carry a lot of muscle naturally like that. So I'll be intrigued to see what he does at heavyweight. I think quite wiry, isn't it? He's very wiry, isn't he? Yeah. So if you look at him and Richard Riakpour, I think Richard Riakpour will be a good heavyweight when he goes up because he looks like he can bulk up. I think Lawrence, Lawrence might get to about 16 stones, 16 five, but that's all he'll need, I think. I, I think you add that extra two stone to him, I think you put a lot of people over. All right then. Uh... Shannon Courtney and Rachel Ball are going to fight for a world title, but Shannon's got a, a six-rounder uh, to tick over next month. Uh, do you feel that Shannon Courtney gets preferential treatment from Matchroom over other fighters, other female I think fighters? This fight, I, think, I think this fight's embarrassing. Uh, why the hell this is being for a world title? I don't even understand why that has to be for a world title. Like, And you won't realise this until Rachel Ball gets in with someone like an Ellie Scottney. And it doesn't go the distance. And then you'll Does go. Does it water down okay. the product list, the world title status kind of thing? So look at before I offer an opinion, you've got to try and understand it from Hearn's side, right? Hearn's trying to get this female boxing thing happening for two reasons. One, it's just cheaper to make those fights. Yeah. Right? When you when you don't have crowds, you're trying to fill your fights with people like Terry Harper, Tasha Jonas, Katie Taylor, mm. uh Shannon Courtney, you're trying to fill in with those guys because they're cheap. They're cheap fights to make. And then you go, right, it's a world title fight. So when, when Sky make noise, you go, look how many world title fights they're giving you. Hearn's not stupid. He knows what his contract states and these count as world title fights. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. And boxing fans will swallow this, but if, if you do, then that's on you. Like, I, I it's... I'm, I've, look, mate, I'm lost for words. Shannon Courtney's fighting for a world title, having beaten who exactly? A bunch of shelf stackers. I uh, know. Yeah. And, and it's not even like, I'd have understood it. If she had come off like an Olympic medal and you just said, okay, a couple of journeyman fights, go fight for a world title. I get that because there's the pedigree. But this just feels like it's manufactured. It feels like they just want to create something out of Shannon Courtney. Do you feel that if Shannon Courtney were the same, let's say, for instance, Savannah Marshall and Shannon Courtney were the same weight and they fought on ability, how long would that fight last? Uh, round and a half. Round and a half. It'd be like three. And that's two minute rounds, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So actual fight would last three minutes, you would think, yeah. Do you yeah. think it's right that we could put Shannon Courtney in a, in the same category as Savannah Marshall as a world champion if she beats Ball? No. Nah. And nah. Clarissa Shields, yeah. you know, they're all world champions. Could you imagine all on podium with the belts at the matchroom uh, summer barbecue? And, and Eddie said, so these are the female world champions in England and they're all lined up and you've got excellent... But... but <laughs> and then you but are... Let's ask a real question. What's Frank done for female boxing? He's not really big on it, is he, Frank? No. What's What's Bob Arum done for female boxing? He's not, not much. In it either. They're old schoolers, aren't they? H Heyman's had a go, so he, I mean, he he tried, but the only people who who are doing anything are Dazone and Eddie Hearn. So Hearn's got his. Um, Oscar's got uh, Franchon Cruz and a couple of others, but no one else is doing anything. So this is why it's allowed to go this way. The promoters need to start backing female boxers. I'm in favour of female boxing I'm not going to lie but I just want I want I want them to get the cream of the crop not not these shelf stackers and care home workers and stuff that's not for me all right then uh Frank Warren's not been very well apparently I, think, I don't know if I mentioned this in another video but apparently he's on the men so we wish you well brick top uh, awesome. yeah fights Terry that rematches we, we don't we always seem to see rematches clauses in Joshua fights Dylan White fights but there's no rematch for Johnson against Baturbia or B2B, whatever you call him. Uh, no rematch for Harper Jonas. Uh, no rematch for Sam Eggington against uh, Ted Cheeseman. 
Do you feel that Eddie has his favourites? No, I think Eddie's just trying to protect the money. Yeah. So, so I'll give you an example. Let's say, let's say Cheeseman had a world title when he fought Eggington. You'd rematch that because it's a world title. You're like, well, we can make money on this. But otherwise, why would you? Like, that's why they can drag out the Fitzgerald Fowler rematch because it's like, well, <laughs> it's not for anything. And there's no money at stake if we delay it by another two or three years. Yeah. Yeah, all right then. Uh, have a look. White Pavetkin 2, Wardley Molina. What do you think to them fights, Terry? Um, it's a crossroads fight for Dylan. No, no, I don't. Because, like we said earlier, the thing is, I don't think we necessarily follow Dillian for his path to the world title. We follow Dillian because he's just a guy who loves to fight. And as long as he can do that, people will always watch him. Now they'll even pay to watch him, as long as he can still entertain. The worst thing he can do in this fight, in my opinion, is box cautiously, because then people will just be like, nah, we're watching this. Dillian's going to have to go for it in the rematch. There's no getting out of that. And I he's think a cutting off Povetkin, isn't he, Terry? Well, he, he's got this thing I really like about him, that he comes on strong in the second half of a fight. Mm. So we didn't get to see that in the first fight. So I wonder if we'll see that in the second fight. Yeah. But the, the worst place to be is tired against Povetkin in the later half of a fight, because that's when he does his best work. Yeah. Uh Fabio Wardley against Eric Molina. Is he pushing 40 him now, Molina? He must be. Yeah. Inactive. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and another drugs ban cheat. You know I mean, another drugs ban violator that Hearn's working with. There you go. Yeah. There you go, Eddie. Afternoon, Eddie. Working with your drug cheats. Yeah, again. No, no, no integrity in the sport. None at all. Uh, well, it's not good, is it? But who do you think wins that, Wardley? Well, yeah, Molina will be told to to roll over. But I find it really strange. I don't know if you ever saw that interview where Molina was like, why would I ever come back to the UK to box? Because remember, he got done by UCAD. So he failed a UCAD test, and that meant that he couldn't box in America. And he was like, I'll never go back to the UK. Well, here he is. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Well, I'm not happy about that uh, Dylan White card, are you, for pay-per-view, but it is what it I is. Can't even, I can't even remember who's on there. I know, I know it's White. Campbell Atten against TBA, Wardley's on there, Molina, White, Povetkin, and is it Court Corman, or something, Corman against somebody else, or ba Kane Baker? Kane um, against somebody, somebody. Corman. Against Cordina. No, it's not. It's Corm it's Cormani or something. Hang on a minute. Let me show you. It's Joe Cordina versus Kane Baker, isn't it? Or something like that. Oh, no, it's... Uh, I don't think it's that. Uh, two seconds, I'll find it. Is this it? No. Uh, no. Somebody sent me it. But, uh, but it's... Uh, oh, here we are. I think it's... I don't think it's a good uh, pay-per-view, but then again, what 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 is a good pay-per-view nowadays? You know what I mean? Really? I can't find it. It's the the, the the actual card's garbage, in my opinion. Well, uh, think about what the pay-per-view is there for, Russ. Right, take money off one of person. Is it use of Kamari against Kane Baker? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, Yusuf's a good kid. Um, we go to the same gym. And I have no issue with Yusuf having that kind of fight. He, you, well, Porky, you'll like this. He's plied his trade on the small hall circuit. That's what you like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, he's done that. He's done this thing in the amateurs. I think he boxed for Neesden slash IQ. And he was, he was okay. Yeah, my argument is Dylan White against Povetkin's not for a belt. And uh, Wardley against Molina. Well, Molina's 
so it, it shouldn't even have a license, mate. He's a drug cheat, but he's pushing 40 or around about that age, and he's shot to pieces. And that for a chief support is garbage. It's utter garbage, as Ozzy Smith would say. I just think it's awful, mate. And uh, I think Sky, Sky could do with putting another fight on there and treating the fans. That's my opinion, you know what I mean? And you told me they're doing this in Monaco. Yeah, that's what somebody is saying on, on Michael Benson, is it? So, uh, Devin Haney says that he, at this, at this age, he's the equivalent to Floyd Mayweather, but... <laughs> Floyd Mayweather was a tw what twenty year old, twenty one. He'd beat General Hernandez, didn't he? We we're, were a long standing champion. He took him to school one every round, didn't he? Um, Devin Haney. Devin Haney's not even Luke Campbell right now. So, well, Eddie Hearn is shouting that he's the new Floyd Mayweather. Well, yeah, but yeah, but that's what he's paid to say. Yeah, pretty. That's what he's paid to say. Floyd, he's isn't even. Nah, he's De Devin Haney hasn't done anything, anything to warrant that. Like he's never, there's there's no performance of his you look at and go, God, that was amazing, you know. So, nah, until oh. until he jumps in with Ryan Garcia or someone at that level, nah, nah, you just gotta go leave him where he is. Uh, the Gareth A. Davis situation, and there were a video put out about him. Uh, he's done a Zoom with this woman, and she she had a thong on. She's got a leg on table, and she's shown him, and you could, and she was saying, "Is that all right?" And it it's pretty it's pretty. Uh, I, I thought it was a bit pervy myself, and if anybody would be a potential pervert in boxing, I'd have to say Gareth D. Davis could be a mix for that because. I don't think I could do anything like that on here. I just thought it was in bad taste and rather seedy. And uh, who was the woman? Who, who was the woman? Uh, it was on Twitter. I forgot who put it on now. Whoever put it on were really clever because they, they did stitch Gareth A. Davis up. But when the camera zoomed in on him and she stuck her leg on, she had a big. She she was a blonde woman. Uh, and uh, it was uh, two seconds. Kevin, I'm just filming. Let me call you back. Are you over it? No, I'm at home. All right, all right. See you in a bit. Uh, mate, that's it. That, that's your sponsor call, mate. Like, we are walking. You're supposed to be in Rotherham. I'm not going to be at office, am I? Because they we're waiting on uh, the new computer to be delivered, aren't we? So, it's, it's, what, what would point in me being up there if I ain't got a computer? I'm just going to sit in training, Russ. You could, I could yeah, you have just been there. Yeah. But I've got, I've got to go. I've got to go to the dripping taps house in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the dripping taps are expecting me. I've got some on with him. I'm not going to say what, but I've got to go see old Sean. So me and my mate are going to go see him. But uh, I'll, I'll call it uh, rather on my own. But getting back to Gareth A. Davis, I just thought it was a bit seedy, to be honest. Uh, I thought it yeah, was he's... very seedy. I'm not a fan of his. He's a wrong end. For any number of different reasons, but but he wouldn't be the only one in boxing who behaved that way. No, I mean, I mean, I've never, I've, I've never had a brass man. It's not my kind of thing. But I've heard that, I've heard he's into all, I've heard he's into all that kind of thing. And that's it. Look, everyone to their own, isn't it? But as long as you don't carry off like that in my, in my company, I, I'm all right about it. But I don't want to see him on videos that people are sending me, putting his head on social media, and and, and behaving like. Basically, like he was old enough to be the girl's dad, and I just thought it was. I don't know if she it to be him. I don't know if the girl were doing it to be. I don't know. Let me see if I've got it on it. I don't know if she were doing it to be. I don't know. Just seedy or such so, so a controversial. I don't know. Let me have a look here. I might have it on here. I might have it on here. Let me see if I've sent it to uh, Rico. I just thought it was just really, really, I don't know, somebody who's got a job now with his own and works in newspaper. He's doing Zoom interviews like that at home, uh, from home, and, and he's carrying off like that. I just thought it was in bad taste. That's just my opinion, man. I just thought it was in bad taste. And that's just how sometimes it goes, isn't it? It's... Uh, 
yeah, do you know what? But you, you, you know, you know the game, Russ. These guys, they know too much to kick them out, and these guys are too desperate for the, for the perks to ever upset the apple cart. So I don't think anyone will get rid of him. I just say, ah, he's being silly, and everyone will move on. Yeah, but you'd have thought if, if he's if he's trying to move into them circles that you don't get, carry off like that because if that were my daughter, I'd ground her for a month. If she were at that age, obviously she's only eight now. But if she were a twenty-year-old boxer, twenty-two-year-old, I say you ground her for a month, so you can cry all you want. But uh, and and I'd be going and knocking on his door. So what 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 were all that about? You're old enough to be a dad, and you're behaving like that. Is a fifty-odd-year-old man carrying off like that? And I just felt that it was seedy. Just I didn't like to see it. It'd be interesting to see what Martin. Uh, Fearball thinks about it because he, he, I mean, Andy, they always put a, a certain uh, spin on something, don't they, and to kind of make it funny. But, uh, <laughs> hang on a minute, let's have a look. Now, I don't think I've got it, but uh, which is a shame. Oh, hang on, there's a few Dave Caldwell sermons that people keep sending me. He seems to be doing sermons every Sunday, doesn't he, Dave Caldwell? He seems to be doing these uh, sermons, the Dave Caldwell sermons and stuff like that. I don't know what to make of it or what do you think? Every Sunday, giving an opinion. Russ, his his job is a lonely one, right? How much do you reckon Dave's making from his gym every year right now? Probably not that much. So he's got to put himself out there to keep himself relevant. And to hopefully keep his sponsors happy and stuff like that. I, I get why he does it. But I also think he puts himself out there so he can tout for, for new talent. I think I've got it. I think I've got it, Terry. Great. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's see if we can do it. Mate, you know, you could have just you could have just said that to me, right? Hang on a minute, just be, just be quiet. Let me play this. It's only 18 seconds. I mean, got that one honestly for art, but then I've got the Phoenix. I've got to show you this if you don't mind. Okay, I'm I've sure no one will mind. Ugh. Oh my god. Yes, I can. Oh my god. Who is that? He said, he said, she said, can you see it? He went, yes, I can see that. And his eyes were like, and I thought, you know, not I've ever seen a woman in a thong before, but I, I, I don't know. I just thought, I thought, I had a thought, he'd have carried on like that and then said to his son, you know what, I'm going to edit that out. I just think he slipped up. And uh, I think, I thought it was just a bit embarrassing, to be honest. And he, he should really know better, shouldn't he, than to be carrying off like that. Do you know what I mean? I think uh, so. Yeah. Yeah, that that wasn't that wasn't nice to watch. No. Nah, this yeah, you know. But look, there's there's loads of guys like him in boxing. The only reason he's interesting to the opposite sex is because he can talk about boxing. That is it. So yeah. he's just one of many, which is sad actually. It's a sad reflection of our society. Yeah, uh, Trish Dixon. Did an interview with Barry Hearn. To be fair to him, he did mention the Epstein situation and him being in the book, but Barry shut him down. It was shut down, wasn't he, within 30 seconds. Uh, do you feel that Trish got brave doing that and it might harm him down the line? And if he can say, ask him that, why hasn't anybody else asked him for two years? Uh, Russ, mate, to be honest, everyone's just trying to eat. That's the problem. Yeah. All these guys are just trying to eat. And until we break that cycle, until until we get independent journalists covering boxing, that's always going to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. Because in the old days, like the guy that would cover boxing would also cover football and stuff. So he didn't care if he upset people in boxing because he already had his money coming in from the football stuff he wrote. Now you've got these specialist boxing guys who are like, if I don't get my press pass, I'll feel like a failure. So they do as they're told. Imagine we're clever about who they give access to. 
and and I can imagine Barry probably said to Tris, "Yeah, you can ask me about Epstein, but I'm not going to answer it." And so they just went through a little dance just to show that Tris was doing his bit, and then Barry went, "I want to do my bit." Mm. But that <laughs> these are questions that need to be answered. Hunter Biden and the kids, Barry Hearn in Epstein's book, all these questions need no, to be answered. He knows I want it about it when it first came out and nobody followed up on it. Did they? I can't work that out. Well, they were told not to. They hounded everybody else though, didn't they, about that Victoria Hervey had to go on ITV, didn't she, and explain herself why she was in the book. She, she gave her side of events. But there's, there's other people that, 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 like Barry Hearn and the couple of, in the spot, want well, some other well, blue bloods on it or some some high up people. Yeah. Wow. And the worrying thing about that was, it wasn't like there was just one Barry Hearn number. There were like loads of Barry Hearn numbers. Well, five want the two mobiles. Well, well, they're a personal number, two mobiles, and an office number and a home number, weren't they? Because you could see them as they were stretched out, weren't they? Yeah. So, no, no. But he said Barry Hearn said he met him once. But why didn't Trish Dixon say, "Well, where did you meet him at, and what did you talk about?" That's all you had to why say. Have you got, oh, why has he got five numbers for you if you met him once? I don't understand that. Yeah, exactly. And he and Barry Earn said that, well, well, he was one of them guys who meet people and then he'd go get the number and write him in a book. I don't get it. If I meet somebody, uh, I don't, and, and just to say hello, hey, up, mate, oh, yeah, oh, that's Barry Earn. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he's a sports promoter and that's it. I don't then go get my black book out and put all his numbers in it. He just didn't add up. And I think. Why didn't Barry just give him a business card? Yeah, exactly. And well, why didn't Trish Dixon ask that? But why didn't Coogan Cassis or all these other people ask that for the last two years? Because they're frightened to death. And I don't yeah, think the is closed on that for me. I I ain't got closure on that. So Barry Earn, you're welcome on Porky's Corner anytime. I'd like to ask you some questions, but silence is golden on that one, I'm afraid. But fair play to Trish Dixon for mentioning it. But it's like Barry Earn sort of put him in his place, and then Trish sort of like whimpered off didn't he like a little poodle <laughs> he did didn't he were like a pit bull at one minute uh, doing it the big Tom Platts and then he ended up like Mr Puniverse didn't he he, he shrunk he, he, he had balls like that then they shrunk to like little pea ball pea side you know like you know, the, Trish Dixon you've got the heart of a breadcrumb so I was very disappointed uh, let's have a look what we've got now Nathan Cleverly, has his head gone? Shadow boxing now, dishwasher in kitchen in his underpants. <laughs> Instagram. Do you know what? Mate, I haven't seen those videos yet. So if anyone's got them, send them in, please. I need to see that because. Look at your Twitter handle, at Highfield Boxing, in it, Terry? Yeah. Send Terry Nathan Cleverly video of him shadow boxing around a tin of Cross and Blackwell barbecue beans. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Cross and Black. Well, if you want to send me any barbecue beans, send me a bit. But send me a pack of 48. No, don't send me one tin. Uh, I feel sorry for Nathan Cleverly, but at least he can say he's got Carol Vorderman as a notch on his belt. He won't like me saying that, will you, Nathan? <laughs> that's that, that's still mental, man. I can't process that. <laughs> uh, a while ago, go on, Nathan, lad. You're some boy, you. <laughs> Carol Vorderman uh, is a milf, isn't she? So they say. Yeah, it's still about 80. Yeah, all stretched about. Right. Uh, Rob Tebbett, Spencer Fearon, aka Malcolm X, and Tunde Ajayi, raw beef or intense beef? Ooh. So, luckily, I've had time to think about this. I don't really want to stick it to Tebbett because. I just think he's having a hard time of it. I think it, there's a lot of pressure to deliver on boxing social. And I think he's realized boxing's a really small market and you don't really grow in that market. And he's tried everything. They've tried buying subscribers. They've tried buying views. They've tried buying comments. They've tried everything. And the money's not, the money's not coming in. However they want to cut it is up to them. But in simple terms, the money is not coming in. And you imagine you're Rob, you're not making that much money. And you work for a company you barely have a shareholding in, although you're trying to tell people you're the managing director, but it's backed by, 
Who is it? It's backed by a company called Crate Media. So here's what your fans need to understand about boxing social. And maybe this makes it different from IFL. I'm not sure. It's backed by, by, by what do you call it? Crate Media, which I think is like originally the company that Kettlebury used to used to own. Hey, well. listen, tell you while we've got you on, why don't we tell them who was offered the job when Boxing Social started in a curry house in Sheffield? We're all there, weren't we, mate? Uh, Riku. Rico, it was me. I were offered it by Neil Kettleburn. I said, no. <laughs> Who did he do it with now? With that Ben Doughty, is it or something? Did he start with Glenn McCrory? Yeah, yeah, there was Glenn, there was Ben Doughty. Glenn there that night. Liam Cameron, Chris Medley, me, Dennis, Richard Towers, Dave Allen, I think. And yeah. I uh, I said, I don't want to be traipsing around the country with we, 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 we a laptop and a, and a, and a camera. I said, that ain't for me. But uh, obviously... Did I drop a bollock? No, did I act? Because I do my own thing. But uh, I would offer that. I knocked it back. So I've got no computer skills. But we have to say that Rob Tebbett speaks. He's got a better vocabulary than somebody like me, hasn't he? No, I don't think so. No? No. No, I don't think so. I mean, just because... No, 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 no. Not at all, man. Well, just because he sounds... Like he went to acting school, although he never really acted in anything. No, nah, no, nah, Russ, man, don't do yourself down. The fact of the matter is you you deliver more for your listeners than he does for his. That's that's just the start and end of it. What, in Michael Jackson leather? <laughs> oh, mate, what the hell have you got on? It's like it's not, it's not even the same colour as Michael Jackson. Michael mate, Jackson. mate, Victoria Beckham had a jacket like that. You're having a shocker today. I don't know if to put the black one on. I've got that many. Mate, you look, mate, mate, like, enjoy the pride match. <laughs> I've got to get me wear that, isn't it? I know. Well, I had it on three times. Every time I got wear it on, people say, Porky, that's a cringer, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I don't even go down to uh, go into Village, Edlington Motors. They're like, will you take that off, Russell? But, uh, but no, uh, do you feel that boxing social. Is going to be a force, or do you see it falling by wayside? I think I think it is where it is. So oh, there's that let's... beef there because there's obviously some beef there, and well, I mean, we're, okay, no, but, a couple oh, of gyms no, down no, there no. are going to block him, aren't they? They don't want to meet. No, him. No. So uh, let, let's let's all roll it back. It's a platform that's backed by a company whose business is manipulating social media, right? Mm. That's essentially what boxing social is. They remember. I remember Kesselbro explained it. He said, "Look, our day job is manipulating social media to help brands grow." Yeah. And he said, "I am a boxing fan, so I said I'm going to take my love of boxing and what I do for a business and build Boxing Social. The real aim for Boxing Social, I remember this. It was to build a platform they could sell advertising on. That's all they cared about: live streaming events and selling advertising." Now, from what I can see, the advertising sales aren't all that. And in terms of broadcasting live events, that tebbet has been turfed away from a couple of situations. So I, I'm not at liberty to say which ones, I don't think. I don't think it's public. But he's gone into various promoters and they've just been like, mate, why am I doing this for you? Where's my money? And he hasn't had an answer for that. So I think Boxing Social will just be what it is for now. You know, it's a long way behind behind the gloves. It's a long way behind IFL, who I think are the top two in the UK at the moment. Um, seconds out, they're irrelevant in this country. And then for me, it's Porky's Corner, man. Like, in oh. terms of like size, yeah. Coming up on the outside. <laughs> no, but Russ, but you see, you've got that lane, right? That we know what we're getting when we subscribe to Porky's Corner. Yeah. We know what we're getting every week. Whereas you go on Boxing Social and you're like, eh, whatever. Like, I'm only going to hear on here what I heard on Behind the Gloves or what I heard on IFL. You're not going to get any exclusives here. You know what I mean? He's done a few. Like, he did one with Thomas Hauser, which he bottled out of, actually, which he should have kept up. But he didn't. Yeah. Do you see uh, Tunde and Spencer Fearing pulling him at some stage when shows, when shows are flowing again this year? I think a lot of people will... A lot of people want to see Rob. He's he's done a lot of shady stuff behind the scenes. A lot of people want to see him. Not even necessarily to put hands on him, but they just want to see him and go, mate, 
you want to survive in the sport, you've got to learn how to deal with the characters in the sport. I don't think he's learned that yet. Like you can't, you can't reveal those private voice notes, man. Like you're not supposed to do that. Like Russ, you've got stuff on your phone. Like if you if you played it on on your episodes, man, you double your views or triple your views. Yeah, but like, I'd also fall out with everybody, wouldn't I? Exactly. And the thing is, if I see you do it to that person, I'm like, let me delete the voice notes I've sent to you. I'm gonna delete all that stuff yeah. because I don't trust you. And in, in this game, if you're not trusted, you're nothing in boxing. Yeah, that's it. Do you feel that Rob crossed the line that uh, maybe you can't correct now? He tries to play a tough guy when he's not a tough guy. Like I said, the guy, when I when I dropped that pipe bomb on Rob Tebbett, he was leaving voice notes on my WhatsApp. He was calling me. He was WhatsApping me. He was behaving, behaving like a jilted ex, to be honest with you. But I just parked that. I said, no, no, leave it. Just carry on with life. You know, at some point we'll see each other and it will get addressed. But for me, Tebbit, nah, nah, he he hasn't got the he hasn't got the thick skin that Coogan's got. That's why Coogan's successful. That's why Michelle Joy Phelps is successful. Shouts out to Michelle. She's having a good time. I think she went on a road trip to Utah with a friend of mine. And so they're having a whale of a time. So good luck to her. But she's thick skin. Coogan's thick skin. Yeah, I know, Thelma and Louise. <laughs> no, nah, so I don't think Rob's got that thick skin that they've got. He's going to have to acquire it at some point. He's quite sensitive, like like Danny the Sex Pest Flexen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Uh, well, we've covered a lot of topics today. So basically, do you see Spencer Fearon going all roadman gangster on Rob Tebbett if he sees him? A show. No, no, no. He'll just confront him and he'll just go, well, what have you got to say now? And Rob will back down and he'll apologise and everyone will just move on because conflict is bad in boxing. Yeah. It draws too much attention. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, scheme, well, scheme, not scream, Porky. Yeah. Now that's Dennis's dad's saying, isn't it? Scream, not scream, yeah. Ross. Is it scheme, not scream, yeah. Dennis's dad used to say? So yeah. I was with every Wednesday. I used to phone him, and uh, he always used to say, "Scheme not scream, Bobby." Yeah. Right then, all right then, Tony. Well, listen, I'm going to get off to Pontefract to see the dripping tap. <laughs> all right. Mate. I'm going to call up at office and get any mail and mail in the letterbox. That is not a, not emails because there's no computer. There. It's not. Yeah. I'll be glad when this virus has has uh, done. But I'm booked in for my teeth, Terry. Second week in March. Oh, see, whoever that guy is in the comments, right? He's gonna be he's gonna be ruined now. Yeah, really. Uh, nothing to say. Porky's missing teeth. Porky's missing teeth. I'm booked in. I fly on the 9th, I come back on the 14th. So where are you getting it done? I'm having it done at a company called M3 Dent. Uh 29.50 foot top, 29.50 foot bottom. Then you've got a thousand quid for uh what do they call it? Bone graft, and then there's obviously all other stuff in you know, flights and hotels and everything else. And where is it? What Turkey? It's in Sofia, Sofia. But I've been told today that I've got might have to go to that to Cody or some hospital on the three days before I come back for the COVID thing, and you need a certificate to get back on place. It's all a bit complicated. Do I need one to leave UK? So it's all it's all I don't know. I've already booked my flights, but uh, I ain't part of me anymore. Yep. But but, yeah, they, they might change the rules by that point, so it's just worth keeping an eye out. Yeah, I might be able to eat something then that's solid and chew it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, Porky, man. You know, I, I don't know how we'll cope, man, when, when you get everything fixed. Jeez, I know, yeah. I, I, well, with that gastric and now this, I mean, can I, I could have bought a could have bought an house up here for that. <laughs> But we'll get them. We'll get. We'll get them done, and uh, then I'll probably let uh, John Fury knock them all out for me and claim on insurance. Nice. And get them done again. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It is what it is. It's seven weeks to go now. But I hope. I hope they're not going to start cancelling flights. I just want to get it over and done with because I've been yeah. told it's quite painful. Actually, bone grafts and then drilling and oh god. Oh. But why? Why do I want to pay thirty-five? 
that place uh, near where Mickey Fio lives, they want 35 grand that place in Essex. And when I could pay a fifth of that, so I, it's only a good bit. Wait, 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 they wanted 35, 35 grand. Yeah, 35, yeah. Oh, it's a lot of money in it, that. Fuck so, it. It's all right if, I'm, if I've got a part in the only way is Essex. I'd be able to afford that one. I'd, just, I'd rather have no teeth than pay 35 grand. Well, I haven't got no teeth, have I? I've got about five missing, but but no, I just want to <laughs> took out and start again. So I'll get some get a <laughs> meal down me then, won't I? Oh, so, <laughs> <right>. blender. <laughs> so, pork is missing teeth. You made me look at my finances <laughs> and get this sorted. So, thank you very much. So, Keith, what are you going to say? What's it going to be next? Pork, pork is missing brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all looking good, isn't it? But other than that, I'm in a good place. I'm doing something I love. And it's just a pity about this virus, isn't it, Tell, Do you know what I mean? Mate, like, do you know what? Being honest with you, there are bits of it I've enjoyed. And the thing I've enjoyed, Russ, is it just stripped all the bollocks out, right? All those people who used to pretend and they used to hide behind restaurants and pubs and bars and pretending they were interesting when they weren't now that there's nothing we're finding out who's interesting look you're still kicking our product i'm still kicking our product there are people who are waiting for better days mate we just kept making it happen mm. right because we don't need to hide behind anything russ and so to all the people who who haven't hidden to all the people who've carried on being good dads good mums good brothers sisters good employees whatever congratulations to you because it hasn't been an easy year and to the people who are still hiding and going maybe i'm not as interesting as i think i am mate just go out there and be interesting take a few risks yeah you know? come on There's aj Hobson said to me didn't he ages ago look if you want to get on in boxing you've got to come out your comfort zone and he said i think you're wasting your time with messing with seconds and stuff like that he says you're a natural in front of that camera i goes oh, i don't know he goes no how you tell a story you know what I'm like when I'm out on that, don't you? I always have like a big table with me, don't I, Terry? And everybody, yeah. I mean, everybody hangs on me every word, but I like to think that I'm life and soul at party. And I suppose it's just doing that in front of a camera and not in front of a group of people, isn't it? I suppose. We all have, yeah. we all have those little quirky ways, don't we? There's English and there's porklish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, mate, look, mate, keep doing what you're doing, keep refining yeah. the product. But the key thing, I, you know, I say this to you in private as well. Mm. always challenge yourself to be better yeah 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 i am challenged. that's so, why i sat up today <laughs> yeah so so the thing i say to you russ is start watching some videos about how journalists make stories and how filmmakers put films together because you'll hear some little nuggets there that go ah maybe i can put this in when i do my show and you'll just keep getting better and better yeah yeah i will i'm gonna uh i've got a few ideas it's just we, we, it's just getting uh, getting it going on, on camera. We've got uh, we're doing some at Clinton's gym in a few weeks. Uh, me, Clinton, Glyn Rhodes, I think Jason Barker, Savannah Marshall. We're going to do a uh, some filming up there. All being well, it's it's all depend all depending on virus and that. Probably February, but we're going to get some down. Hopefully, I'll get Savannah there with a belt. Clinton with his belt. And we can just ch talk boxing and ask them what they think about where it's heading and how the careers have gone. You know, stuff like that. Just if I take film crew up from that from that place in Leeds, they can jazz it all up a bit, can't they, J uh, Jamie? Yeah, but, but also, so with that one, just ask yourself two questions. Why does anyone care? And then how can I make them care? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. All right, do you want to give anybody a shout out, Terry, or your Twitter or Insta handles? What are they? At Highfield Boxing Twitter, isn't it? For everything, yeah. Just yeah. Well, you guys, man, get me up to get me up to two thousand Twitter followers, please, man. I mean, I'm, I've got these embarrassing numbers right now, so the algorithm doesn't love me at the moment. Have you done a beautiful boxing podcast this week, Terry? Do you know what, Russ? I haven't. So I've, I've got a I've got a knee appointment in about two hours. Is it seventh so of January? Yeah. Last one. Yeah, yeah, the Ryan Garcia one. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't, I haven't done anything, hey, because I'm not at home. So I'm getting my knee seen to this afternoon. I think I'm going to get them scanned, and then once I once I get home and stuff, I can then think about 
doing something. But mate, boxing's quite flat at the moment, so there's nothing that's inspired me. Because I could just do an episode just talking, but that doesn't that doesn't excite me. I need I need an angle. I need an edge. I need a story to tell people. So when that happens, I'll do another one. Yeah, yeah. All right then. Well, listen. Thank you for coming on. You've been a real no worries, mate. And I hope you I hope you're going to be all right down there in the smoke down London. Oh, oh, I hope you're you are in that jacket. <laughs> I'm going to be all. Right. I'm not. I'm just not going to get out of the car. I'm going to just say, "Come out and take the car, Sean." <laughs> have you have you have you got a matching mask, Russ? I've got a uh, I've got a Lacoste mask mask in car actually. I ain't got a red one though. It's black, but uh, <laughs> I've, got, uh, I've got him a. Uh, uh, there's a porky uh, Udi here for him. He's been on at me and I've found him one. I've had it on that. There didn't any more. It's just the one I've had on. He, he can have it and that. He's washed and ironed it. I'll give him that. He, he, he likes all like that, Sean. Uh, he's a boxing fan, isn't he? So, you know, so, but, but yeah, so, all right, then we'll listen. You take care, Terry. Um, I will do, mate. And we'll speak probably this evening or later this week. Dad, definitely, and mate, Thanks, mate, as always. You take care, God. Don't have nightmares. Oh, wait. <laughs> take care, <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Well, that was Terry. I'm going to go in Merck today because there's no snow, is there? So, that was Terry. No car washers open, though, is there? Uh, I enjoyed that with him. Uh, let's hope that. He comes on again. He's been a regular and he's helped my channel grow. Uh, two million views. I didn't think I'd get there. It seemed way off, way off when I first started out with Rico. Uh, when we Rico, then K Official helped me. Big shout out to K Official. If you need any clothes, track suits and print and stuff like that, K Official, Cheshire, Nicola, Kevin's sister, who helped me for 10 months. She works for Dennis now. That's a long story. Uh, so thank you to them and thanks to Kev for backing me but mainly a thank you to myself for sticking at it, I'm quite proud of myself I should be as well and I'm a big critic of myself so thank you to me <laughs> but mainly thanks to all you people who've watched because I never thought I'd get to this situation but we're, at, we're there now the foundations are laid to cause absolute knackers. I'm going to cause so much bollocks, it's unbelievable, in the next 12 months. And nothing can stop me. Nobody can stop me or scare me off. So all you people, I suggest you start being a little bit nicer to me in your emails, or you boxing people who are having a little moan. Or just behave yourself on your social media, because I am watching From afar. All right. Peace out. Big shout out to my friend Frank in Berry. I mean, if you need me, Frank, just ring me anytime. Peace out. <laughs>